almost done oh hi guys are you here to watch some madness tutorial okay you came to the right place let me just finish this wait it's it's drone too I'm not supposed to show you the stuff you haven't seen anything okay greetings and welcome to the first part of madness combat animation tutorial in this video I will teach you how to make your own madness combat animations starting from empty sheet and reaching a real result to start making stuff you will need a program, it's called Flash. I'm using Adobe Flash version CS5.5 and it's my favorite one. Probably because I found it the most stable of all of Flash versions I have tried in my life. So when you get the Flash, you should click File and Create New. Here you will see the special window, window of creation of our new workspace. You should set the weight to 640 and height to 360. And then set frames per second to 30, 30 frames per second. And also I will recommend to set after save, because it sometimes may save your work or even save your life. Because Flash is a super program that accidentally can crash and uh, just kill your movie if you haven't saved it. So okay, we can press OK button and here it is, our workspace. For now it's empty, but soon we will add stuff here. To start adding stuff into workspace, we need the sprites. Now you will ask me a question, where do you get sprites? Ok, uh, you can draw sprites yourself, just like select the needed tool and just like draw stuff like this. Ok, I like it, it's, it's awesome head sprite, yeah, right. like this. But if you don't have enough skill in drawing and you just wanna start from learning physics instead of drawing, you can just like use few websites where you can download already made sprites. The website with the biggest amount of madness resources is nestage.org. Here you can see a lot of sprite sheets, sounds and other stuff, you can explore it yourself. Also you can find madness resources at Madness Combat Wiki, there are different madness sprite packs. So you can download the needed ones. The third such website is Madness Archive, there is a resources tab, you can just click it and here you will find some more sprites. And the last place where you can find sprites is newgrounds.com, the place where me and most of madness combat animators have started making this stuff. Here you can just like select search on grounds and type madness sprites dot floor. Then you need the blog stop. So here you can see some posts made by different people and let's pick a random one. So here is the link to a free gun sprite pack made by Setic. But do not forget to credit the creator of sprites when you use some user made sprites or if you use original sprites, credit crinkles. It's very important. And now when we got needed sprites, let's get back to the flash. But before we start animating sprites, I wanna tell you some basic things, because if you don't know them, animation process will be hard and non-understandable. I don't wanna waste time talking about the toolbar or some basic settings that you can see in every other program, but I will tell you about the main thing that is used in Flash. It's a timeline, you can see it right here. In the timeline you will see all the frames and all the layers during the animation process. And as you remember in the beginning we have set it frames per second to 30 and it means that 30 frames on a timeline is the same thing that one real second of animation. So if you press enter it will look like this. You don't see any difference, it's because our workspace is empty and we haven't animated anything yet. But now let's add some frames into animation. I have put this gun here to show you which kinds of frames you can add. The first kind of frame is a keyframe that you can add by pressing F6. It is marked with a black dot on the timeline and the keyframe means that it's a frame that contains some image. In our case it's a gun. To animate stuff you should add keyframes with some image, just like let's animate this gun moving into right. Ok, let's press F6, then move it, then press F6 again and move it again, and one more time, and one more time I guess. Okay, so it looks like this, our gun is moving into the right direction, and this is exactly what keyframe means. Now let's talk about regular frames. The regular frame is a frame that can be added by pressing F5. It doesn't have any unique image in it and it just repeats the last keyframe, so we can press F5 much times, add much of regular frames, and we will see that after our gun moved, it looks like static object because every frame repeats this keyframe. So if we click somewhere here and press F6, we can continue animating this gun moving 
into some other direction. So, as you can see, the regular frames makes object static and repeating the last position of it. And one more kind of frames is an empty keyframes. It means that you can press F7 to add one and it will just remove the frame. It's, it's an empty frame and you can add any other object, just like this gun instead of this. So, and anim animate this gun. And when we don't need anything on this layer anymore, we can press F7 again and the layer is empty and the following frames are empty too. I guess everyone here knows how the layer works, so I guess I don't need to teach you how to add layers or what the layers does. And now the most important moment, we are starting to make our Madness Combat animation. The first subject that we need to add is a background. In future videos I will show you how to make your own backgrounds, but for now we will use background from some crinkles incident, place it somewhere here. Now let's call this layer background and let's put the lock on it to not accidentally click and move it during the animation process. Now let's add a folder and let's call it grant1. Let's add one layer into this grant1 folder. Then let's open any resource pack, in my case it's the center resource made by Birdjack and then let's select needed parts of our ground. We will need this head sprite, this body sprite, these hands and these legs. That's what we will need now. Okay, let's select everything except legs, copy it and paste it here. I press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy and paste this stuff. Now let's select all of it and separate it to different layers. It will look like this. Now let's place them correctly. The top layer is his right hand, let's call it hand 1. The next layer that should be here is a head, let's call it just head. Then the body, hand 2. And the last empty layer we will use for legs. Let's copy them and put it here. Both legs should be placed on one layer to animate like I do. Some animators animate them separately into separate layers, but I animate them always on one layer. Now let's place the hands. This is the structure of our ground. Let's rotate his body a little bit, like he's really standing, just like this. We, we just made a ground right here in this room. Let's place him somewhere here. Now let's make a 3 seconds of animation where this guy is moving. For 3 seconds of animation we will need 90 frames. Let's select this part by holding shift and left clicking. Then press F5. Now let's select the onion skin, enable it and Remove the unneeded onion skin size to make it look like this. The onion skin is a very useful thing that makes you see the outlines of previous keyframe. If we add keyframe here and move the body, we will see the previous keyframe outlines. So it looks like this. Now let's make him walking. To make the guy look like walking, like an original madness, you should make him accelerating and decelerating on each step. So to make one step, you should make the acceleration of his body with more and more far and then he should slow down and now I'm just pressing F6 and clicking left mouse button so it looks like this is his first step now let's make his second step the guy should accelerate and decelerate again so we are just like repeating what we just did before and now the third step the same as previous. Fine, we are done. Now let's let's animate how this guy rotates and returns back. We should rotate his body a bit into right and then it should move a bit into left and rotate into left. Then we will replace the body with another spread of body that is rotated into left direction. Now let's place the body using the onion skin. You should place it perfectly, so it should look like he really rotates, because it's very important to make the animation smooth and to not make the rotation look shitty. Now let's just make what we did before, just like make few steps, but in the left direction. And look at this, we are done with the body, so we have 3 seconds of animated body now. Now let's start animating the head. It's not that hard that you can think about it, because the head should be animated just like placing every time on the same position as the body and do not do this mistake, do not place the head very into front or very into back. It should only go sometimes upwards and sometimes downwards.
Now we reach the moment when the guy should rotate. So just like press F7 and add empty keyframe. Then you should go to the sprite sheet and choose needed head sprite. Or just like place it on the position of the head. Animate few frames with it. Then you should repeat the same thing that you did before but with another head sprites and animate it in a few frames too. So the head is done and now it's time for hands. It's not very hard to animate because the hands in regular walking are animated with the same principle that the head is. So just like check what I'm doing here. And now pay attention to one difficult moment here. As you can see our character rotates and raises his hands up. And also during this rotation his hands change its price like the head did before and also swap the layers. When I say this I mean that the hand that was in front of character will now go into background of character. So just like right hand will be now animated on the layer of left hand. And the same thing will happen to the left hand. It will be animated later on the layer of right hand. Good job, we have done with the basic animation, check what we have here, but there are still legs remaining, sometimes legs are very difficult to animate, so prepare yourself. The hardest thing about legs, that is the legs are two objects that have dependencies on each other in every movement. To animate the legs, you should make that the front leg makes a quick dart into front and then the background leg does the same. And at the end of the step, where the body have decelerated its speed, the leg should come to almost the same position as they were in beginning of the step when the body started to accelerate. Probably the process of animation will be more useful for you, so check what I'm doing right now. And if it's still hard to understand how to animate the legs, you can just rewatch this moment and try yourself in flesh. The same thing that I did here. When the character rotates, we should also not forget to put another leg sprites that are rotated in left direction and then just animate it like previously. Here we go, it's the final result of our walking dude. Do not forget to press Ctrl S and save your creation in .flow format. I guess we are done for today, thank you for watching this video, I hope you liked it and it was helpful for you. I probably gonna record some more tutorial videos like this, where I will show different stuff like shooting, melee combat, blood, lightning effects and other stuff, so stay tuned for it. And do not forget to subscribe Ground Zero YouTube channel to not miss new stuff and see you next time guys, bye!